everyone, welcome to today's English session. We're going to kick off by doing a vocab blast and recap over some words which we have been exploring in our target word sessions. So let's start with the word on the left and sound it out. We've got th thud. Can you say that? Thud. So what does thud mean? Have a little think. I remember thud is a sound that is made when something really heavy hits another object, okay? So it can be a sound. Also, if it's a verb, if you're thudding something, okay, you are hitting something quite heavily. We've also got this word on the right, which is plod. Well, that's weird. That's just created a lovely line, long screen across. Plod, there we go. So the word plod means to walk along quite slowly and heavily. And we said, didn't we, that that elephant was plodding along the road when he was crossing the road. So I've written three sentences down here on the board and I want you to have a little look at them. So can you read each of the sentences? And then I want you to think, is it thud that needs to go in there or plod? So you're going to need to pause this video, have a read of the sentence, and then put the correct word in there. So do that for me now. Fabulous, right, hopefully you've all done that at home now because I'm gonna talk through the answers. So the first sentence then says, there was a loud, loud something from outside, outside the or door. So there was a loud from outside the door. Hmm. We've already said that plodding means you're moving quite slowly, so that wouldn't make sense. So this word here would be thud, okay, in terms of the noise that they can hear. So a loud thud from outside the door. Hmm. Let's check this word here. So I along until I got to the end of the run. I, along until I got to the end of the run, I thudded. That doesn't make sense in terms of running, does it? Because you wouldn't be hitting something if you were running. Plodding is about moving slowly and heavily. So yeah, maybe if you've got to the end of that run, then you're having to move quite slowly. So I plodded along until I got to the end of the run. So this one here is plodded. And the last one, I up dropped the box and it made, made a loud, loud, ooh. I dropped the box and it made a loud thud. Well done if you said thud at home. Fantastic. Give yourselves a pat on the back and let's get started into our English lesson. So yesterday you were thinking about who the earth belonged to. So it wasn't just belonging to the man. And we looked at the end of our story, didn't we? And we found that the earth is, in, is possessed by everybody, okay? Everybody owns the earth and therefore everybody has to look after it. So for example, we said that there was the dinosaur, the snake, the cat, and lots of other animals as well who the earth belonged to and humans, so including the man. Here are a few animals that I came up with yesterday. So I've got bird, here it is in the sky. I've got the dinosaur, I've got the crocodile, I've got the snake, I've got the chimps, the monkeys, and I've got the parrots. And you might have come up with lots of other ideas as well. But these are the animals that I chose to say who the earth belongs to. So it wasn't just the man, remember, it was lots of different animals. So today we're going to be looking at apostrophes, your turn. So we can use apostrophes in many different ways, but today we're going to use apostrophes for possession. And that means we're going to use them to show when an object or something belongs to somebody. So I'm gonna go through and explain what that means, but here, look, I've got my sentence, which was on my previous slip, and here I've written the man's world. So let's have a look at the object, okay, in that sentence. So the object in that sentence is the world, okay? And the person who belongs, that, who owns the world in that sentence is the man. And because of that, 
we've used an apostrophe S here to show that the world belongs to the man. Okay, let's have a look at some different sentences. Here I've got the cat cat's tree. tree. Hmm. So the object here is the tree and it belongs to the cat. So here I've got the apostrophe and then I've got my S. Here I've got the cat, cat's bed, bed. So here I've got my object, which is the bed. A person or thing that owns it is the cat. So I've put my apostrophe here. And if you look at all these other sentences, I've also got my apostrophe S at the end of my noun to show who owns or who belongs, who owns another object and what who the object belongs to, sorry. So for example, here we've got the sky belongs to the dodo, the world belongs to the snake and the grass belongs to the parrot. All different examples that we could be using today. So here I've got some sentences and I want us to have a try at working out where the apostrophe goes, okay? So let's have a little look. So we'll start with this sentence here and it says, the man's, man's the ox box is red, red. The man's box is red. Right, so what is the object that belongs to the man? Well, it's the box here, so this is the object. And then who owns that object? It's the man, so here. So I need to put the apostrophe where then? Yes, before the S here, okay? To show that the box belongs to the man. Now to draw an apostrophe, remember, we start at the top and we curve it round. Start at the top, curve it round. So have a little go at doing that. Here I've got another sentence. I've got the g girl's hair is the no, that doesn't work. The out and brown. The girl's hair is brown. Right, what are we talking about in here? We're talking about the hair. Okay, then who does the hair belong to? Well, it belongs to the girl. So I need to put my apostrophe where? Correct, I need to put my apostrophe here before the S. Let's check this last one here. I've got the a apples are red. The apples are red. Where's the object that we're talking about? Who do the apples belong to? Oh, it doesn't say. So do we need to put an apostrophe here? No, because this isn't showing possession. This S on the end here, remember, is showing plural. So it's showing that we've got more than one apple, which is now something we've explored in school. I just want us to clarify it, okay? So if we are use, adding an S onto the end of a word for pluralizing something, we don't need to add an apostrophe. It's only right now if we're doing it for possession. That's the focus of today's lesson. So let's check then down here, because I've got two sentences and I'm not too sure that they're right. So I just want to check. So my first sentence here, let's read it. It says, the toys, toys are a mess. The toys are a mess. So what are we talking about in this sentence? We're talking about the toys. Does it say who the toys belong to though? No. This is just going to be the plural of toy. So do we need an apostrophe there? No, you're right. Let's check this sentence then. So here we've got Jack's t-shirt is blue. Jack's t-shirt is blue. Right, what's the object in there? It's the t-shirt. Does the t-shirt belong to anyone? Yes, it belongs to Jack. And we've, so we've put an apostrophe and an S there for possession. And yeah, that is correct. 
Well done. Right, let's have a little go then at trying to write some sentences using apostrophes. So I'm just going to write a simple sentence, okay? And then we're going to expand on that in a minute. So instead of saying the man's earth, I'm going to use one of my animals to write that sentence again and make sure that I've got an apostrophe. So I think I'm going to start with the snake. I'm going to use this spelling that I did yesterday. So my sentence is going to be the snake's earth. Your turn. Great. Right. So I'm going to write the snake's earth. But remember, this is the object. It belongs to the snake. So I need to put an apostrophe here just before the S. What other one could I do? Uh, bird. So the bird's earth. So I'm going to say the bird's earth. And let's check it. So identify the object. That's the earth. Who does it belong to? The bird. So I need to use an apostrophe before the S to show possession. Hmm. I'm going to do crocodile next. So I'm going to say the crocodile's world this time I've decided. So the crocodile dials world right so now the object is the world who it belongs to is the crocodile and I need to use an apostrophe to show possession so I need to put an apostrophe here I'm going to do one more I'm going to oh I think I'm going to use dinosaur so the dinosaurs world the dinosaurs world so here's my object belongs to the dinosaur therefore I need to put an apostrophe here to show the possession right stick that in your head because now I'm going to show you your little task so I want you to have a go at writing about who the who owns the different parts of the planet earth and I want you to use an apostrophe to show that possession okay so, for example, I'm going to start by describing this little guy down here, the dodo. Okay, so I'm going to start by saying what on earth belongs to the dodo. So I'm going to say they are the dodo's houses. Okay, so they are the dodo's houses. The dodo's houses. So on the earth, there are the dodo's houses and they belong to the dodo. Now, remember, just like before, I've got my object, which is the houses. It belongs to the dodo. So here I need to put my apostrophe to show that I've got some possession. Hmm. What else could I look? I might say the bird. So in my earth, on my earth, the birds like the branches in the trees don't they so I might say that they are the birds branches so they are the oh I've forgotten how you spell bird you sound out for me the bird bird great let me look on my sound mark where's the er uh sound there it is great they are the birds birds branches ooh a is oh goodness me B -r -a is branches right so where's the object the branches who does it belong to the birds so apostrophe here after branches no that's not right because that is plural isn't it that's because it's more than one it's who do the branches belong to that is the bird that's where i need to put it Hmm, so I've said birds, I've said dodos. What about the chimps? Because they're playing the blades of grass. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have that. They are the chip, the chimps, blades of grass. Oh, that's tricky. They are the chimps, ch -i -m -p -s, chimps, chimps. Blades, blades. Ooh, sound up, blades. B l a d s. 
blades. Can you remember like sharp pieces of grass? Hmm. I make an A sound. Let me who's an A and a Y, but actually a split digraph. So watch this split digraph. So I'll go B, L, A, but I'll put a D in it. They are the chimps' blades of grass. Fabulous. Right. So I'm talking about the blades of grass. So the grass is the object. Who does it belong to? It belongs to the chimps. Ooh. Does my apostrophe, this is a challenge for you at home now, go on here, the chimps, or does it go on the blades of grass? Think about it. What is the object and who does it belong to? Is it, does it belong to the chimps or does it belong to the blades? Well done if you've noticed that it belongs to the chimps because the blades of grass are the pieces of grass that is the object. Okay, so chimps needs to have an apostrophe. So let me double check and see if I've got that correct. I'm gonna get my lovely green pen out, which I know we all love, and I'm gonna see if I can mark this. So I've written for my first one, they are the dodo's houses. So the houses are the object, it belongs to the dodo, and here I've put my apostrophe, not that you can see it because I've just covered it up, but here I've put my apostrophe, there we go, okay, to show that the house belongs to the dojos. Here I've got they are the birds' branches, so I've got the object which are the branches, and I've got my apostrophe here to show that it belongs to the birds. And here I've got the blades of grass and I've got my apostrophe here to show that it belongs to the chimps. So your task today then is to have a little go at exploring using apostrophes for possessions. All these different objects that you can see in this picture of our lovely earth, who do they belong to? So those leaves on the trees, who do they belong to? The grass around them, who do they belong to? The skies and the clouds, Maybe they belong to the parrots. Who do the flowers belong to? Okay, have a little go and make sure you're including an apostrophe to show me who an object belongs to and not when it's for more than one. Okay, so not when we're pluralizing something. Have a little go and send me some things across so I can see how you're doing, but I know you're gonna be super good at this task. Good luck and I will see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.